when we saw the mouth of the lions being shattered was when the patriarch of faith stood his ground and he said if the lions will eat me I will be eat for the sake of the gospel he stood this ground and he said as long as I am here I'm not going to be shaken I'm not going to be moved I'm going to continue in the way of my Lord he stood this ground they saw the fought men when they were in the fire men that had stood their ground and said for God we don't compromise these were men that pioneered moves of God in the past for every move of God for every dispensation of God there are men that are chosen on ground and the price to every move of God is death of a man whenever a man wants to enter into a dispensation and download a dispensation for a generation the man has to die to himself it is death that announces man it is death that is the price of a city when you want to take over cities for God you have to die to yourself men that move as that man in this world they have nothing to lose anymore whatever they have they can count it as loss for Jesus John chapter 16 verse 2 it says they shall put you out of the synagogues yeah the time cometh that will so ever kill of you who think that he doeth God's service we are entering into a time when the blood of the saints is going to be demanded when the faith is going to be tested even to the point of death there are people that are moving that are going to live a testimony of materialhood on this realm of earth there are men that are being raised by God that are going to pioneer the move of God but pioneering a movement of God demands a service to God even to the point of death what what is your conviction how strong is your faith he said that they shall put you out of the synagogues a time cometh when we will be in church and people will come and take you out of those churches and they will test your faith and they will be holding knives they will be having guns wanting to kill you for your faith and they will point at you and say what you are doing is wrong we want to end this and they will come to a point of killing you will you be able to stand on that day or you will chicken out and run away revival is bad when matthias come on ground and they start to move a dead man in a generation this is the kind of man that we need he say be careful a time like that come in where they shall kill you thinking that they are doing God's service do you know in their hearts they will say we have did God a good thing we have eliminated this group of people out of this world for God they will think that they are getting rewards for what they are doing yet it is the blood of a man that is being garnished it is the blood of a man that is being poured out for a generation revival won't start unless we have materials on ground because what is coming will demand even the lives of men some are going to die on the sweat some are going to be stoned to death some are going to be imprisoned what will you be able to stand for god again in these times there is need for men that give themselves to God and say, if it means death, I will die. That's the testimony of Matthias. Men that are not ready to lose anything as far as God is concerned. The will of the Father is what is in their hearts. John chapter 15 verse 18. He says, when if the world hurt you, you know that it hurt me before it hurt you. It means that Jesus was giving a revelation on what is going to happen. The world around you, you might see it not liking you. You will see it fighting you. You will see it persecuting you. Jesus says, don't worry when you see that. It entered me before it entered you. And he says, if you were of the world, the world would have loved his own. But I chose you out of the world. That's why the world persecutes you. And it says, a servant cannot be greater than his master. If I, I was persecuted, you 
was of the persecutor. If you are truly for Jesus, what the first will be a reality. If you are truly for God, the kind of trials that he encountered, you encounter them. This world won't be a safe place for you. That's why he said he will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That is the dwelling of men that enter into the journey of God. You dwell in a place that is away from this world. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Darkness will cover the earth and cross darkness the people. Many of the people that you meet, there is darkness in their heart. Some who just hear you without doing anything to them. Some who just feel like killing you without you doing anything to them. That is the world that you are living in. Will you be able to stand? We are entering into a time of martyrs. Whenever a move of God is being released, there are martyrs that are brought on ground. And this man, they move as dead men, they move as men who don't get another king in this world again. What they get at, they get at the things that are past. For out of them is their way to the Father. They don't stumble by temptation, they don't stumble by persecution, they don't stumble by tortures. Tortures come and the test men and the men are still standing. Will you be able to stand? When those times come, when they will demand your blood for Jesus. Through my tires, they move with a conviction that is above anything that can come in their way. When trials come, the conviction that they had in your heart is stronger than the trials, is stronger than the tribulations. They fight them. They don't run away. They don't chicken out. They stand their crowd. We have for so long loved God for what He gives more than what He is. Our love for Him is not yet genuine. That's why we can't stand for Him in the days of trials. If it is material things that brought you to Jesus, you need conviction. You need to be born again. Why? This kingdom is not a kingdom of pain. It's not a kingdom of merchandise. On that day when they came and they were doing merchandise in the house of the Lord, He came and He waved the temple and He said, My house shall not be a house of merchandise. This is not a house of give and take. This is a house where men offer themselves as living sacrifices. You move and you are a sacrifice before God. Every time your life can repent and be offered to God. Disciples, when they were at the lower edge in the spirit, they would ask God, We let everything and follow you. Why shall we care? But as they grew in the Lord, they came to the point where they were able to offer themselves even unto the point of death. We had the dusty one of God. Philip chapter 3, verse 7. He said, I counted everything that was of gain to me as lost to him Christ. This is the testimony of a martyr. What did the power say that I not see? What conviction the boy had that he counted all that was of gain to him as lost for, for, for just to win Christ? Do you know the conviction that he had? The conviction that he moved to it? It is a man that moved from place to place witnessing God. And he says, everything that was of gain to me, I counted it as lost to in Christ. And then that he says, I counted everything that was of gain to me as time. <laughs> Hey, Raki, this is a man that had faith in God that could not be moved. And he says after that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. The man is ready to battle in the sufferings of Jesus. These are Matthias. These are men that have nothing to lose in this world again. For everything about them is dead. Mokun used to say, I press towards the mark. Even after all this conviction, he says, I'm still pressing. That is a realm of Matthias. Where what they want to see happening in the generation is far beyond every testimony that people give about them. Men see them in the marvel. They are surprised. This kind of realms, this kind of dimension. But the men, they are keeping on in search. They are never 
never satisfied in that bad day that you say that you are satisfied with the labor that you are earned. You are not yet in the realm of Mataras. Mataras, what they see is far beyond this realm. You can't be able to explain the greatness of God even in your lifetime. You may live for hundred years teaching about Jesus and witnessing Jesus on the face of the earth, but you won't be able to witness him to his fullness because he's too powerful. It takes men that are always in search to trip dimension part of him, but his fullness is something that we cannot touch. We try, we search deep, and we are always in need. No matter the realm, the dimension that we download, we are always in need of Him. Because every day is a day of new experience. He can't be explained by mortality. He goes beyond time. He is the great I am, the Lord of Lords. So, Paul says, I pray towards the mark. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. Paul goes on to tell us that there is a breed of people that I tell you about if you cry, that they are now the enemies of the cross. Paul was concerned about a certain breed of people that were rising, that were enemies of the cross. And he goes on to explain what he meant and he said, these people made their own bellies, they are God. There are people in our generation that are being fed by their appetites. You love fame more than God. You love money more than God. You love material things more than God. That thing that you love more than God will be your town for. It will be your reason for compromising. Paul said, these people, they are enemies of the cross. Whenever your conviction is not based on God, you are a, you are, you are a failure in the move of God. You can't be trusted with the move of God. But a move of God is pioneered by the hands of Matthias. Will you be able to even cede your life to God? Will you be able to offer your life to God, to this gospel, if you are not able to contain the trials that are coming in your life, even when they don't demand your life? In the realm of Matthias, you are dead to your appetite. Paul continues to say, these kind of people, they mind everything. And he goes on to describe it, so he says, our conversations not in this world. This is a man that lived in the realm of Matthias. First Thessalonians chapter number 5 verse 2. He said, the day of the Lord approaches like a thief. When you shall say there is peace and safety, then shall be certain distraction as the travels upon a woman who is pregnant. This is what is going to happen. And he said, be watchful. Open your eyes. Be sober and watchful. For that the day might not get you like a thief. He says, let us not sleep like others do. We are moving in a generation where men are sleeping. But he says, let us not sleep like them. The realm of Matthias is a realm of men that are awakened to the kingdom. They move and their eyes are open. Redeeming the time for the days of evil. This is the realm of Matthias. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. He said, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. And they shall kill you. They shall hurt you from nation to nation. This is what is going to come. These are the trials that the church is facing. Will you be able to stand? How strong is your faith on that day? That is when we will see the men that have conviction. You think Christianity is going to end like this? There are trials that are coming. There are persecutions that are coming. Some men are going to be killed. This is the realm of Matthias. Are you ready for that time? What will be your journey on that day? Will you not be one who will deny Jesus? Because you are afraid of a knife. Because you are afraid of a sword. How strong is your faith in God? What is it that is your basis for continuing with this journey? If you are still expected to receive from God more than to offer yourself, trust me, on that day, you run away. You say, I never prayed. I was never a Christian. You deny Jesus in the public. Matthew 24 goes on to say, men shall betray one another. Verse 12 says, 
the love of many shall grow up. It is a time when the faith of men shall be tested. Men that say that they love Jesus, they will deny him on that day. For their faith will be tested. Their love for him will grow up. You think Christianity will always be good for you. You think you always live good on this realm of earth. But the time is coming. We are going to be tested. We are the testimony about the life of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3. He said he was despised and rejected of men. He was a man of sorrows. acquainted with grief. Acts chapter 15 verse 26 speaks about Paul and Barnabas. He said these are men that they must the gospel. They massacre their lives for the gospel. These are Matthias. Every man that moved with the moves of God was a man that was ready to offer his life on the day when the ultimate of blood. This is the testimony of Matthias. When we have Matthias during the time of persecution that is coming, my brother, when I look at the earth, are they Matthias that are moving within our games? Oh, we are chickens that are standing for God. We are a discouraged army that is not going to stand for him on the day of persecution. Every disciple that followed Jesus, we heard about their deaths. Ten of them, they were Matthias. They died because of this gospel. We hear about Peter, the one that we talk about. Remember, every scripture that we read is a testimony of men that moved on the face of the earth and didn't choose to compromise. Peter, we hear that on that day, they said, we're going to kill this man. And they crucified him. And he says, if you will crucify me, don't crucify me like Jesus. Crucify me upside down. So his cross was upside down. The man didn't fear. The man was not shaken. He says, crucify me upside down. These are Matthias. We hear about Andrew, the brother of Peter, how he was also crucified because of this gospel. His cross was exhumed. He says, kill me. It is, if it is for Jesus, kill me. We hear about James, who was the first one to be killed among his disciples. We hear that he was killed by a sword in Acts chapter 12, verse 2, during the time of Herod. This was the first martyr among his disciples. What is the price of such a man in heaven? What weight do such men carry in heaven? You will see the light of men shining forth in heaven. Their crowns will be big. Their crowns will be heavy. What will be yours on that day? Will you not be among those that will reject Jesus? Simon the Salot, he was son as Santa. He was son into half. They killed him because of this gospel. Thomas, he was dead to death. Matthew, he was dead to death again. He was Matthias. These are Matthias of faith. We hear about Philip, how he preached to the Roman Procurator's wife. And the wife was convicted. And because of that, they chose to kill him. So, the one we talk about much. We hear what he says about himself in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. He says, Thrice I was beaten. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Once I was stoned. In the night and the day, I was in the deep. And he says, In weariness, in painfulness, in watchings open, in hunger and thirst, in fastings open, in cold and nakedness. These were things that he felt as a pioneer the gospel. These are men that brought dispensation. And Paul, we hear that he was beheaded in Rome because of his faith. These are martyrs. Check every man that made him part in the New Testament. Check them. These were men that were slaughtered because of Jesus. Most of them, they died a death of glory, a death of the gospel, a death of faith. Stephen, we hear about him in Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 60. That they stoned him on that day. And as they stoned him, he cast into the heaven. And he saw the Son of Man 
rise from his throne. What is it? What glory is in the main time for Jesus that even the Son of Man stood on his throne and he looked at Stephen as he gave his life. And Stephen made the prayer that shook me. I saw we need conviction. He says, Please lay no discharge of him and them. He's even praying for the men that are persecuting and killing him. He is worried about the wrath of God upon those people. He said, Please don't lay charge upon them. These are martyrs. These are men of faith, patriarch. In this revival, if you ever pursue God, let your pursuit not be for what He gives. Truly, I tell you, on that day of persecution, you will deny Jesus. Men that hold on to Jesus for who He is, and men that will stand their ground. Will you be able to walk faithfully in this chain of faith and come to a point where you say, I fought a good fight? How many men are going to be able to lay their blood? For this revival that you are in, how many men are going to stand the test of trials? Nowadays, the average Christian who deny Jesus because he didn't get food for one man. Is it because of food that you deny Jesus? Yeah, I know you have suffered a lot for years now. You have been in poverty. Will it be poverty that will separate you from the love of Christ? He says, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. What is it that is making you shake in your faith? What is it that is making you to feel like you can't continue? Is it not the reason why you deny Jesus one day? You need conviction. You need conviction for the time that you are entering into. It's a time when men are going to be tested personally and their faith, how strong their faith is. How, what is it that you're going to stand during that time? Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 32 to 39. We hear about the men of faith that moved in the past. He said, they watered through churches, they watered through mountains, and in the caves of the earth as the pioneer of the gospel. These were men that were dead and they said, they were tortured, they were imprisoned, they were stoned, they were killed because of this faith. And they said, in that day, when they were given an opportunity to run away, they chose not to, so that they can obtain a better resurrection. What is the reality of this man? These are Matthias. Whenever Matthias are on ground, they have nothing to fear anymore. It's Jesus or nothing. What is it that is in your heart? What is it that is pioneering that passion of God that is in you? Let it be stronger than your trials. Let it be stronger than your persecutions. That is the realm of Matthias.